Good afternoon and welcome to this segment of this year's Health Focus called Boost Your Immunity Through Cooking. It will be narrated by yours truly, Kalita Kelman. This segment will be a series of cooking demonstrations that will demonstrate to you the ease with which you can cook using plant-based materials that are easily accessible to you here in your local supermarkets. So I hope you enjoy these demonstrations and I hope you start to integrate them into your normal meals and boost your immunity through cooking. The first thing we're going to view will be corn butter and this is being demonstrated by Sister Flo Newton. The key ingredients that we are going to see being used in this demonstration would be cornmeal and cashews. Now there are some health benefits to cornmeal. Cornmeal is pretty cheap, so it's easily affordable. It's a good source of fiber, protein. It's rich in complex carbohydrates. It contains vitamin A, it's low in fat, and it contains essential minerals. Now cashews, their health benefits include rich in heart healthy fatty acids. Cashews are also protein rich and they contain no cholesterol. So without further ado, let's view the cooking demonstration by Sister Flo Newton as she shows us how to make corn butter. Hello everyone. We are, I am taking part in demonstrating some healthy foods as a part of True for the Final Generation Adventist Congregation Health Focus. Today, I will be doing corn butter. Yes, you heard right, corn butter. The corn that we eat on the cob, when that is ground, right, corn butter. And uh, as I go on, I'll be telling you the quantities, and you can take note and try it yourself, another tasty dish. What I'm going to do first, it has the recipe asked for gelatin, but it didn't have gelatin, so my substitute was is chia seeds. Chia seeds. And I'm even going to put a little bit of lens, ground linseed with that. So, first of all, I'm going to measure out one teaspoon of chia seeds and one teaspoon of linseed. And with that, I'm going to add a quarter cup of normal tap water. Okay. While that is standing there so it can gel together, it, I'm going to get a quarter cup of cashew nuts. Cashew nuts. So I'm going to get those, but I like to grind them dry because you get a finer consistency. So that's why I'm going to put them first in a different container and I'm going to use the same Nutribullet and grind these cashew nuts to powder. I'm going to put them in a plate so you can see how fine they have become.
Okay, good. So we have ground cashew nuts. We have our substitute gelatin soaking. Now we are going to add all the, uh, first of all, some boiling water here so this here can be ground a bit as well. So to that, I'm going to add one cup of boiling water to the gelatin substitute. You can always get the gelatin, but as I told you, I'm substituting. One cup of boiling water. Now I'm going to grind this a little. The heat usually causes the Nutribullet to come together so tightly. So you have to use extra strength to get it open. Now, all we have to do for this recipe is to add the other ingredients. Now, before I started, I would have made what is called cornmeal mush. I took the cornmeal... Half cup of cornmeal, three quarters cup of water, put it on the stove and let it cook a little. Not quite like cuckoo because it's missing the oak roots. But yes, this is my cornmeal mush. And out of this, I am going to use one cup, a full cup, and then put it into the blender, into the Nutribullet and then add the other ingredients. So let's get one cup of this. So we've added our cup of caramel mush to the blender, which already has in the gelatin substitute, which I made from chia seeds and linseed. Now, we are also going to add the ground cashew nuts.
we need now two teaspoons full of lemon juice. So I have my teaspoon here. We need two teaspoons full. Okay, so that took about half of that lemon. And then what we will also need is the salt, the teaspoon of salt. Now, when we are doing recipes like this, it would be good to have two sets of spoons because some ingredients are dry, some are wet. So I'm going to use this for the salt. Okay, now what I also did, which the recipe didn't ask for, the recipe asked, says that you can put grated carrot for color. But instead of the grated carrot, I said I would put some turmeric to give it a lovely color. So I'm going to put a teaspoon of turmeric in it. And of course, you can vary according to your likes. And I will also add some extra garlic and uh, onion powder. All that is left now for us to do is to blend. And we have our butter. All that is left to do now is for it to go into a container and put into the fridge to cool and uh, be solidified a bit. Here we have the finished product of today. Here we have the finished product of today, and uh, this is called corn butter. You can use it on crackers, on bread, any other way you use the normal butter. And you can do it with a clear conscience because you are eating something that is absolutely healthy for you. It has corn, which is great. It has 
linseed and chia seeds. It has turmeric and all those other healthy seasonings and uh, some lemon and cashew nuts. All healthy ingredients that you do not have to worry about that can be found in the normal butter. So today, I hope I would have helped you to be able to prepare another healthy dish that you can eat without having to worry about cholesterol and those other dangers that could cause damage in our bodies. Thank you. Our next demonstration comes to us from the lovely island of St. Lucia and Brother Shurgan Thomas will demonstrate how to make vegan granola bars. Now the key ingredients that we have pulled out of this specific recipe, oats, chia seeds, sesame seeds. So we're going to watch that demonstration in a minute, but let's talk a little bit about the health benefits of oats. Oats are a good source of soluble fiber, and we've heard a lot about fiber and how important it is for our gut health. Not only that, if you're trying to lose weight, eating foods that are rich in fiber will give you that full feeling so you don't overeat and you keep your calorie count low. Oats also aids in lowering cholesterol, improving blood sugar, and whole oats are rich in antioxidants as well. So oats are very affordable and they're good for us. Sesame seeds, there's some health benefits here. Good source of fiber and plant protein. And it's thought that they may be associated with the lowering of cholesterol and triglycerides, lowering blood pressure, supporting healthy bones and reducing inflammation. Chia seeds. Now these are one of my favorite seeds. Personally, the health benefits would include delivering a massive amount of nutrients with very few calories. Almost all of the carbs are fiber. So that is definitely a plus. Chia seeds are loaded with antioxidants. They're high in good quality protein. Chia seeds are high in omega-3 fatty acids. So these are some very powerful seeds some and oats, affordable, used in this recipe. So take a look at the demonstration by Brother Thomas. Good day. So we are going to be making a healthy snack today, a granola bar or granola cereal, whichever you choose. You just have to bind it or keep it crumbled. So our ingredients for the day is going to be two cups of blended oats, one cup of raw oats, we're going to have our spices, a teaspoon of ginger, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. We're also going to have a cup of nuts, some blended and some whole. We're going to have our chia seeds and our sesame seeds along with some vanilla essence for flavoring and some organic honey. So we are going to start by mixing the dry ingredients. We're going to be pouring the blended oats. Then we're going to add our spices. Then we're going to mix it up. Then we're going to add our oats. And let's mix it up once again. Then we're going to add our 
sesame seeds. I have a 1.5 ounce in which I'm going to use all. Then we're going to add in our chia seeds. I'm going to add in two tablespoons. that in as well. Then we're going to add in our oil. So you're mixing. So you see it's already starting to come together, so if you want it to be a granola, you could just keep it like that, just bake it like that, or as you could see, you could start binding it to make a bar. So then now we are going to add our sweetener. I'm going to go with two tablespoons of honey. Mix it in there.
-hmm. Yeah, so generally I don't usually go for the sweet taste. However, you could add honey or maybe a healthy sugar according to your taste. So you could taste it as you mix. I feel like you would also add your dry fruits and your banana. So right now we're going to pour our mixed ingredients into an oil tray pan. So if you just bake it like that, you could use it as a granola or you could choose to spread it around. after we have leveled it out and um, see it has already come together so we just want to bake that for about 10 minutes our next demonstration is brought by sister Flo Newton and she will demonstrate utilizing lentils to make flatbread this is a very straightforward recipe I think you're really going to enjoy it and you're going to be able to use this recipe in place of the more carb filled and quote unquote unhealthy breads that you're probably utilizing on a daily basis. So check out the next demonstration and enjoy. Hello everyone. My name is Flo and I'm here as a part of our health focus to demonstrate yet another way of using the healthy foods that we advocate that are very good for your health. One of these foods that we often talk about are peas and beans. And some people might think, oh, we can't just chew peas all the time and eat. Well, I've discovered a new way of preparing lentils, one of the more nutritious beans. The lentils I'm using are called red split lentils. You can find them in packages looking like this, or they may be in other packages depending on the producer. So these are how they look. And for those who would have already used them, we all know that they cook very quickly. Now what I'm going to be demonstrating today is called baked lentil flat bread. Baked lentil flat bread. When I first saw this recipe, I couldn't believe it. And when I tried it, oh, it was delicious. So what you do is that you take one cup of those lentils and you soak them overnight in two cups of water. One cup of lentils soak in two cups of water. And the pot of garlic there is just to add a little flavoring as they soak. So I have soaked these already. 
So they are here already to be used. Now, what all you have to do, very simple recipe, is to put these salt lentils with the water that they were salt in into a, a blender or a Nutribullet cup. And we blend them, adding a little salt and for a little added flavoring. The recipe doesn't really call for it, but I also put in a dust more of garlic and a bit of onion powder. But the salt would obviously be needed. So right now, I'm going to put them into the Nutribullet. Okay, we have most of them in. Uh, all we need to do now, we are going to add half teaspoon of salt. And uh, since, since the added flavoring is not included, we just put a little of each of them. Some onion powder. So we've added those flavorings, and all we need to do now is blend. So I will put on the cover, and we are going to blend. We want it blended until it is smooth, makes a smooth paste. When you are finished, it may look a bit much like a liquid, but that is better than have it, having it looking too thick because if it's too thick when it's baked, it will be dry, too dry. So what you do is that you grease your dish and you pour it in as though you were pouring pancakes and then you put it to bake. And uh, you can put it to bake at around 350 degrees and you can do that, and after about 10 minutes, you check it, and then you might need to put, leave it in a little longer. And then afterwards, once it becomes firm, you loosen the edges, you let it cool a bit, then loosen the edges, and you'll be surprised at how it comes out. 
So I'm going to grease the dish now and I'm going to put, pour it in. Make sure you pour it evenly across the bottom of the dish. Leave in no holes. And it is ready for baking. When it is baked, as I told you before, it really surprised me. When it is baked, we got some nice flat bread like this. And having had it flavored and salted enough, it was absolutely delicious. Now, some people, instead of baking, grease the bottom of a non-stick pan and they put it on the stove top. But we are going to bake this today. This one was baked, and it comes out just as good. So, baked lentil flatbread, another alternative to normal bread and to the normal way that we use lentils. So, I hope that you are going to try this and that you will recognize that there are so many ways we can prepare these these dishes, these natural products that helps to add health and vigor to our bodies. Thank you. Our next demonstration is done by Sister Vonda Smith, and we're going to make one of, I think a lot of kids can say that they love lasagna, but we all know pasta isn't the best thing to eat over and over again. It's really not that nutritious it's not giving us much value for the amount of calories that it packs so breadfruit lasagna is coming up next and this is a more guilt-free way of enjoying a favorite from childhood so sister Vonda is going to show us how to make a breadfruit lasagna and of course the main ingredient being breadfruit breadfruit fiber rich the fiber content of breadfruit is around 10.8 grams per cup of raw breadfruit. It's rich in amino acids, rich in antioxidants, and it's definitely good for heart health. Not only that, around every corner, we can find a breadfruit tree loaded with breadfruits when they're in season. So it's easily affordable, easily accessible. So this is a recipe that you definitely want to try out by substituting the pasta for the breadfruit. Let us see the demonstration. And I know you will be excited to try this recipe the next time you're thinking of making this familiar pasta dish. Breadfruit lasagna. Here we have all of the ingredients to make Vonda's breadfruit lasagna. First, you cook the breadfruit and slice it lengthwise and set it aside to cool. Next, you get a deep saucepan, you put some vegetable oil or olive oil. You add your minced celery, minced onion and minced garlic to the oil and saute.
Following your recipe, you use some minced, half medium and red sweet peppers and you add to your saute. One teaspoon of turmeric, two tablespoons of yeast flakes, and one teaspoon of onion powder. Next, you add your paprika, your garlic powder, and a teaspoon of Italian herbs. Two cups of soaked soya mints. Next, we add our two cups of cooked lentils. And we keep stirring to make sure all these ingredients are well sauteed. One teaspoon of Bragg's amino acid. Then we add our tomato sauce. This is three tablespoons of tomato sauce.
Add a quarter to half cup of water. You allow this mixture to so, simmer and you taste to see if you need to add any other ingredients. more bags amino acids and a sprinkle of Goya seasoning salt to taste allow this mixture to simmer for five minutes. Now you have your cooked breadfruit, which was peeled and cooked until just tender. It was allowed to cool and cut into thin slices lengthways. You remove your sauce from the heat. You get a greased Pyrex dish. And first you layer your breadfruit. Wash your hands thoroughly prior to that and you use your layered breadfruit to start and then you add your sauce And you repeat this process and finish with a layer of sauce. You then bake for 30 minutes at 375 degrees. Hope you enjoy.
Sunny Seed Loaf is our next cooking demonstration, which is being demonstrated by Sister Donna Broom. The main ingredient in this loaf is sunflower seeds. Now, sunflower seeds have a few health benefits, and they're definitely packed with some key nutrients. So those nutrients include protein, zinc, iron, magnesium, calcium, and vitamin E. It's also an excellent source of healthy fats. So Watch the cooking demonstration by Sister Donna Broom on how you can create and make Sunny Seed Loaf. Welcome to the Broom's Kitchen. I'm here to demonstrate today a recipe called Sunny Seed Loaf. It's very versatile and the ingredients are very easy to source. The main ingredients are sunflower seeds, oats, and then we have corn, garlic, onion, salt, and what I call mock seasoning, chicken seasoning. So let's get started. The first thing we do, we have two and a half cups of oats, and we add two chopped onions to that, and two chopped garlic cloves. that together right like that now here's your blender and you place the two and a half cups of water in the blender along with one and a half cups of sunflower seeds the recipe is there so you'll be able to see place that in the blender along with your salt. Then your corn. And what I call mock chicken seasoning. The ingredients, you will be able to see it next to the recipe. But just in case you don't have the ingredients for this, you can just use the nutritional yeast alone, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. In the recipe, I did not put red pepper, but I, I add it to give it a nice taste. You can eat your own, whether you want to use it or not, to include it or not, but I put it in to give it a nice color and flavor. So, when you put that in, you put it on to blend, so you blend until it's all blended. Right, it should look like this. Right. So you take the blended ingredients, you place it into a bowl. And then you add oats, the onion, and the garlic in that mixture. Very simple recipe and very easy to prepare. 
So you blend that together, mix it well. You can give it a taste. Um, for those who would like some more salt, you can add it, but I would recommend that you don't use any more salt. So you let that stay, and then you take your dish and you spray it. I'm using some extra virgin olive oil cooking spray, and you spray that in a dish, and you pour that into the dish. Spread it out evenly. Right, and then you cover this for 45 minutes in a 350 degree oven. Now I usually cover it with parchment paper, so we'd cover this and place it in the oven for 45 minutes covered. After the 45 minutes, you remove the covering and let it bake for another 15 to 20 minutes and then you can eat. You can use it, it's very versatile. You can use it as a side dish or you can let it cool and then cut it up and put it in the freezer so that you can use it as a sandwich filling. So here is your sunny seed loaf. This is what it should look like when it's finished. Voila. So happy eating. I hope you enjoyed this. It's fairly easy. That took no more than what? Well, less than 10 minutes to prepare. The nutritional value, um, sunflower seeds are high in fiber. Yeah. One cup of sunflower seeds has 12 grams of dairy fiber and 29 grams of pro protein. So you can easily get a slice of this with some vegetables and you have a complete meal. So enjoy and goodbye from the Brooms Kitchen. Greetings brethren from Trinidad and Tobago. My song today will be Be Thou My Vision. little bit about quinoa. Quinoa can be used in place of your rice, in place of your pasta. It's a much healthier choice. It's very high in fiber, gluten-free, high in protein, and it has a low glycemic index, which is good for blood sugar control. So I hope you enjoy the demonstration that will follow and that will show you how you can prepare this main course meal.
vegan protein shake. For those of you who are in the gym and you want a vegan option to help you recover, to help you with building those muscles. Um, I know some of the protein powders that we use, most of them, which are really popular, the main source of protein is whey. Well, Brother Steve Codrington will demonstrate for us how to make a healthy vegan protein shake. So some of the key ingredients that you can look out for would be vegan protein powder. So we're substituting our regular whey protein powder for vegan sourced protein, almond milk, pumpkin seeds, some flower seeds, cinnamon. This shake is packed with not only the protein powder, but additional sources of minerals and nutrients that are needed for our bodies. Now, protein shake doesn't necessarily have to be used after you're done working out. You can also use this as a meal replacement as well. So let's look at some of the benefits that you will be getting from this protein powder. So first of all, plant-based protein is actually a whole lot easier on the digestive system than its whey counterpart. So that's a huge plus for sure. It also reduces the risk of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. It's an excellent source of iron and a good source of healthy fats. So vegan protein powder is definitely a great source of protein, healthy fats, iron, and it aids in the reduction of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Now, almond milk was used in the demonstration, but you can use any nut milk, you can use coconut milk, you can use um, any vegan milk. You can also make these milks as well so that you are 100% sure that there is no dairy in them and you can make them without using sugar. So some health benefits of almond milk is low in sugar, high in vitamin E, a good source of calcium. You know, we were brought up thinking that cow's milk was good for teeth and bones, but in fact, we found and studies have shown that that's not true. So now using uh, milk, which is plant sourced, will be much better instead of using a milk sourced, um, a cow or dairy sourced milk, sorry. So low in sugar, high in vitamin E, a good source of calcium. They're often enriched in vitamin D, which we have seen is very good for us. Naturally lactose free and naturally dairy, naturally dairy free and vegan as well. So almond milk or any other nut milk or vegan milk is super important. Then we have pumpkin seeds, health benefits, high in antioxidants, linked to reducing the risk of certain cancers. It improves prostate and bladder health, very high in magnesium, can lower blood sugar levels, high in fiber. Cinnamon. Now, cinnamon is loaded with antioxidants. It is thought to reduce the risk of heart disease. It has anti-inflammatory properties. It can improve sensitivity to the hormone insulin, lowers blood sugar levels, and has a powerful anti-diabetic effect. So with a shake, you are really putting a lot of ingredients into this one meal that are really healthy for you. So instead of having a handful of pumpkin seeds there, maybe drinking just the milk and the protein powder over there, um, having your cinnamon in some form or the other, you're putting all these into one meal. And so this meal is very nutritious. And again, you can see the substituting of the plant-based protein versus the whey protein powder is also allowing for your stomach to get at ease. It's making it easier for the digestion of this protein source powder. So take a look at um, the ingredients used and the demonstration by Brother Codrington. All the ingredients have been being mixed together. Allow it to blend nice and smoothly for just about one minute. You want to pulverize those seeds and make everything taste really nice. Remnant bread. 
who said that eating healthy meant you could not enjoy something, you know, satisfying after your meal. As Beijing's and even across the world, after eating your main meal, we usually look forward to some dessert. Well, remnant bread is a guilt-free way to enjoy some dessert after eating. So two of the main ingredients that we're going to pull out and take a closer look at will be molasses and walnuts. Now molasses is rich in calcium, a good source of magnesium, and it is thought to aid in the prevention of osteoporosis. So molasses has several health benefits. Walnuts, we've heard a lot about nuts and walnuts. They're rich in antioxidants. They're a super plant source of omega-3s. They support weight loss, weight control, sorry, may help lower blood pressure, may decrease inflammation, promote a healthy gut, reduce risk of some ca cancers, and may help manage type 2 diabetes and lower your risk of contracting type 2 diabetes. So walnuts and molasses, they're two key ingredients in this bread. There are other ingredients that were included as well so listen up as sister audrey with demonstrates and talks about the other ingredients that she added to make the remnant bread that we previously saw viewed so enjoy the demonstration yes this is um a remnant bread i'm making i have in a cup of cassava flour a cup of nuts, walnuts, a cup of corn flour, and then I have a cup of spelt and a cup of oats. Then I have in a little salt, I have one nutmeg, and some cinnamon, and two spoons of Molasses. If you want it a little darker, you can add in a little more um, molasses. All right, you add in a little more molasses. I don't like it too dark because I find it is the bitter. Right. So I add in that. Oh yes, I have in sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, and sunflower seeds that I have in it. And I blend, oh yes, I have in the fruits. I have one half cup of raisins, half cup of prunes, and half dates. Yes, that's what I have in it. And oh yes, some essence. And grapeseed oil, which is, is 500 ml, but I only put in half of it. You understand me? Half of it so that is it after I done mix it like this oh and I put in two if you have the cashew you can put in the yeast but I don't have any so I use the one that is open already so this is what I put in two of these in two spoon and I'm mixing it up now and when I'm finished I put it in the oven and I bake it for about an hour and a half, right? And when you finish now, when you think it's finished, you can put a, something in it, a stir, to see if it is cooked properly enough. When you put it in and it comes out before it dry, you know that it is well done. So thank you. Coconut date cake. So another treat for our, uh, for after our meals. Some key ingredients: coconut flour, spelt, dates, flat seeds. Coconut flour. It's gluten free, which is a plus for a lot of people because a lot of people now are moving towards gluten free um, lifestyles. So there's it's gluten free, a good source of fiber, and promotes good digestion and heart health. Flat seeds are high in omega-3 fats. Flat seeds are a rich source of lignans, which may reduce cancer risk, may lower blood pressure, and they're also high 
in dietary fiber. We've heard a lot of these things that are high in fiber. And again, fiber is so, so, so good for our health. When your gut is healthy, you are more prone to have a higher immunity being built, right? So fiber is definitely important and it may also improve cholesterol. Dates lowers cholesterol, strengthens the nervous system, protein rich, they're rich in iron, vitamin rich, improves bone health, promotes digestion, and also improves the skin. So take a look at this demonstration by Sister Ade Henry from St. Lucia. So we have come to the end of our cooking demonstrations. I truly hope that you have enjoyed each and every one of them. So just to recap what we have covered. So we've had some breakfast options such as healthy shake, lentil flatbreads, granola bars, corn butter. These can be used as a breakfast option. We had main meal options such as sunny seed loaf, breadfruit lasagna, quinoa with mushrooms and eggplant. And we had some treats to satisfy your sweet tooth, granola bars, coconut date cake, remnant bread. So you can satisfy your sweet tooth without the guilt. So I truly hope that you enjoyed the cooking demonstrations and they inspired you. They sparked your creativity in terms of eating healthier um, and eating more vegan and plant-based foods and meals so that you can boost your immunity so that anytime anything comes up that may be a threat to your health, you can be sure that you have done everything possible to build your immunity so that you can resist that threat.